All right, so this is my explanation as to why this might be my last year of Secret Santa. So um, I've been doing Secret Santa now for five years. I've been really fortunate in that we started very strong the first year, and it's just built ever since. And I've always enjoyed the event. I've always enjoyed the people. Um, I just like the camaraderie, the sense of community. I love celebrating Tina Davidson's birthday. Everything about the event is something that I cherish. What I don't cherish is drama. What I don't cherish is interpersonal disputes. And that is the reason why this may be my last secret Santa. So in the first three years, both uh, Topman, Quan, and myself were the admins for the secret Santa. Um, the third year, which was about two years ago, um, there was a big blowout in the group chat for secret Santa after the event. And that was when I decided that I couldn't admin this event anymore. Um, so it fell on Mason and um, Emily to do it. Emily is the rest is history 1987 and Mason is MBK pop 1997 87 95. You, you know who they are if you know who they are you know who they are so because of that um like I said, I hung back. I decided that I'm not going to be able to do the Secret Santa thing as admin. And they took over and it went really well um, a year ago. The only thing that was a drawback to me is that there were a lot of requirements to do tag videos. And I think I was the only person in the group who did all the tag videos, including the admin. So I was a little bit salty about that. But outside of that, I think it was a good time. This year, um, Mason stepped back from being admin because of his work schedule. And so it fell on... The rest is history 1987 and Sana Storia to be the admin for Secret Santa. And it was kept a lot easier this year. Instead of doing multiple tag videos, we just did one kind of round robin tag video, which was really nice. And I appreciated that. Um, but something happened in between today, at the start of the event and today that I'm going to discuss. And I'm going to discuss it with names because I feel like I didn't do anything wrong, so I have nothing to hide. So Ashley Onionator um, here on YouTube, she put up a tweet, and it was about a day or two after I had done a video about how K-pop wasn't fun anymore. The fan wars and slander and bullshit was making K-pop not fun anymore. And she put up a post on Twitter saying basically like, K-pop can be fun if you just like block keywords and block people. And I rebutted with, you can set your keyword blocks and you can block people, but sometimes random strangers end up in your feed through no fault of your own and they bypass your keyword blocks. Um, I think I had a little bit more to say about that, but I just, I was raw because I was still feeling that feeling. So I put it there. I didn't insult her. I didn't call her a bad person. I didn't say that, you know, she was wildly off base. I just said, here's another perspective. Sometimes the blocking isn't enough. That was basically my point. Well, um, Ashley took some kind of offense to my response and proceeded to block me on Twitter, which, okay, hurt feelings. But the problem is, is that when she blocked me on Twitter, it kicked me out of the group chat for Secret Santa this year. And the admins for Secret Santa didn't notice that I was kicked out of the group chat for a month. Neither one of the admins. Um, and that was kind of hurtful. It was hurtful because it felt like either you felt like it wasn't worth asking me why I disappeared from the group chat or you were glad that I wasn't in the group. Like whatever the situation was, it didn't matter to you that I had left the group chat, even though I didn't do it voluntarily. Um, so finally, I didn't know I had been kicked out of the group chat until I was looking for the shipping deadline. And when I went to look for the shipping deadline, I noticed I couldn't find the group chat anywhere. So I talked to my admin, Emily. And when I talked to her, she's like, oh yeah, I see you've been, you left the group chat. I'm like, no, no. I'm addressing you because I didn't leave the group chat, figure out what's going on. So they finally figured out that, you know, Onionator had blocked me. And when you block somebody, it kicks them out of whatever group chat you're in. So I responded by saying, she blocked me. I didn't block her. I haven't said anything reckless in the group chat. I haven't said anything reckless to her. You're aware of what I said to her because you were a part of that Twitter thread. So I think you should have her leave the group chat because I didn't do anything wrong in either situation. Instead, what they decided to do was ask Ashley to leave the group chat, tell everybody else that because of personal issues, um, I wasn't going to be in the group chat and she wasn't going to be in the group chat and they were just going to move forward from there. And it really hit me in a raw way. And it hit me in a raw way because, first of all, not to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but this is my event. And the fact that you didn't understand 
that I was not in the wrong, that you didn't make an effort to get me included, even though I wasn't going to go and be like, oh yeah, and the bitch did this and that the other. You didn't make an effort to see that I was included again after noting that I did nothing wrong. And then when I confront you about the fact that your behavior makes me feel unwanted, all of a sudden I'm picking on you. And when all this happened, I was like, you know what? I don't think I can do the Secret Santa stuff no more. And it's because dealing with people, like honestly dealing with people. It was something when I first got into K-pop and collecting and being a part of K-pop YouTube, I felt like as long as we all like the same thing, we should all be able to be friends. Not like, you know, the best of friends, but like we should all be able to come together and be cordial because we realize what a niche we are and how many people outside of us are rooting against us. How many people outside of us don't understand pick on us for what we like, you know, really make us feel like we're outside of the norm. And that because we're looking for a community, we would be able to not have infighting and other petty bullshit. Because at the end of the day, we are a part of this K-pop community. But as K-pop has grown, that feeling of community, I feel like has diminished. But not only that, Everything that happens with people's backgrounds and where they come from and what they're used to and their experiences come into their interactions with K-pop. And that's something that it's my fault for forgetting about because I'm big grown so I should know better. Um, but yeah, even if somebody loves K-pop, that doesn't mean that they're not a Democrat or they're not a Republican or they're not racist or they're not this or they're not that. Like There are people who love K-pop and love K-pop idols but are racist against Asian people real talk is the truth and so that's why I'm saying like I forgot all of that stuff and the reason I bring that up is because the characterization that I'm accusing somebody of being a witch or being bad or being whatever it comes from an assumption about me based on a stereotype and it's the angry black woman stereotype. It is the, you're coming to me with aggression and you're, you are coming to me with that aggression because you think all white people are bad or all white women are bad. And that's not it at all. The aggression that I came at you with was frustration. You know, if you look at the hierarchy of needs and some of the more emotional um, patterns for people, everybody knows that anger leads to sadness. And anger is one of the first manifestations of sadness when you're looking at the stages of grief. So my anger comes from sadness because something was taken away from me and unjustly taken away from me and unexpectedly taken away from me. And for a month, nobody cared that my presence wasn't there. And I know there's going to be somebody, more than one somebody watching this and be like, you are really lodging a petty complaint. Like you're really on your bullshit right now, Sam. I know. I know, and that's why I'm talking about it here because I hope to not have to talk about it again anytime soon. Or I might talk about it one or two more times and then I'm going to be done with it. This happens to me all the time in life. And that's the reason why it was so frustrating that it happened here, which I thought was more of a safe space for me. Because in life, I get treated this way. When my daughter was little... She was in kindergarten and the school kept suspending her from school saying that she was fighting other kids. Now, I don't know if you watch my live streams when my daughter is with me. My daughter is not that kid. My daughter's not violent. She's actually shy in real life and she won't put hands on anybody. She's a big old teddy bear. And because of that, I would go up to the school and I would tell them like, I know this is wrong. Whatever you say is happening, you are lying because my daughter is not like this. And rather than trying to hear my side or try to have my daughter talk to the counselor about what was happening at the school, their reaction was, ma'am, if you don't stop being aggressive, I'm going to call the police on you. And this was me protecting my five-year-old from an accusation. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, maybe you were really out of pocket. One time I went to pick up my daughter from school after one of these suspensions where they said she was fighting a kid. And when I picked her up from the principal's office, they said her stuff was in the classroom where the teacher is. I went to the teacher's classroom to gather my daughter's stuff. And the teacher said, oh, there's Stephanie. My daughter had been in the principal's office for an hour. The teacher didn't even notice she was gone. And so this is what I mean when I say, like, you forget that people aren't like you. 
you forget that even though you all like K-pop, everything else is wildly different. And I forgot that even though we all like K-pop, we're all wildly different. And when it comes to interpersonal relationships and interpersonal communication, when I'm communicating to you, I have a frustration. It's seen as, it's seen as me being aggressive and accusing and uncooperative and unreasonable. When really, I'm just trying to tell you, I'm upset that no one noticed this happened. I'm upset that it's not being made right. I'm upset that I was at no fault. And I'm upset now that you're basically saying that I'm being accusatory to you when your behavior speaks much louder than your words. And that's a fact. So with all that said, this will probably be my last year contributing to this particular Secret Santa event. I'll probably still do a gift exchange with my friends. I'll probably still post on International Unboxing Day because it is a fave. And until I'm out of K-pop, I plan to continue to celebrate the day. But in terms of being with this particular group, unless something changes, unless some people want to reach out via DM and do some other stuff on the side, I'm pretty sure I'm out of it. And I hate that it's come to this because I really, really love the experiences I've had over the last five years. Um, this year notwithstanding, the other years have been beautiful. And that is a memory I will cherish for a really long time, but I'm not going to put up with any more bullshit. That's, that's, that's what's up. I'm not going to put up with any more bullshit. So, um, I'm not mad at Emily. I want to put that out there. Um, I was upset with the misunderstanding. I was upset about the characterization, but at the end of the day, I know that she had expressed that she was going through some things personally, and I'm going to put it on that as being like, high strung emotional state and therefore the things that I was giving her just came at the wrong time for her but it's fuck you all day to onionator because you were on some bullshit two years ago and you were on some bullshit this year and we are mutually blocked at this point so thank you guys for watching and oh I also need to put a caveat here don't go to Onionator's channel or her videos and put any wild shit in her comments. Don't go there disliking her for no reason. Don't spread no nothing her way on her Twitter, nothing like that. I'm not about that bully shit because I'm not a bully. And if you want to bully me, come at me because I'm grown. So I don't give a fuck. But I'm saying for her, leave her alone because I'm a big girl. I've put my shit out here for it to be talked about. If she wants to talk to me, you know where to find me. But in terms of everything else, this is where it ends. This is where it stops. So thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.